Okay. So it says. Test. Hello. Thank you. Well, that was fun. Let me see if I can pop it back into full mode. Oh. I, I have. I must have jiggled something on my mouse. I've got two mice and. You looked at it sideways. I looked at it sideways. Life goes on. You need a cat. Oh, I have, a, I have four. <laughs> I have four, including a, a geriatric cat who's now in a kitty condo in the main area so we can watch him. Have you ever heard of a kitty condo? Take a pic. I have a picture of them. I'll send it out. I've got I've got an, an image in my mind of what I imagine it must be, but no, I've, I've this is the first I've heard of it. My sister-in-law has um, a love of cats, and uh, so kitty condo is essentially a three-level a three-leveled cage that looks like it's cute, but. That way he can he can be more um, he can be contained but not feel like he's being contained. <laughs> he's so he's his bottom levels is pan, middle levels is food, top levels is bed. It looks like he's in an apartment complex for cats. I just found where to turn off the beep beep, so hopefully it's gone now. Good. Where was it? So in case uh, it was in the menu bar at the top under participant. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Okay. okay You're in the app. Not the browser. You're in the app, not the browser. Correct. You might post the blue sheet link again one more time. And I've only got a few. And I've got a lot of people on the thing. Are you in the um, Jabber room? Uh, I am. I see one other person right now, which is Robert. Hi, Robert. Hi, Robert. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Once uh, we get started. AC, are you um, the LSR working group, just like John and I are the... Uh... Oh, shoot. Yeah, I must have said, keep me logged in. Yes, yeah, I, I am. Too. Uh, I, you don't mind. I'll sign the blue, virtual blue sheet. You can, you can stay the LSR working group, you know, as long as you like. That's fine. Okay. But, I mean, unless, you know, if Chris comes along too, you guys are going to have to fight over him. <laughs> Actually not. You can log... Uh, you can join a, a, the same meeting multiple times with the ID. Yeah, well, in fact, you can see both Sue and I are logged in as IDR working group. So, yeah. The only, the only thing is, if either of us speak, you'll have to know who it is through voice recognition. Oh, that's I think hard. we can work that one out. We can work. <laughs> well, that's just, let's just ignore that one. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for signing the blue sheet. Appreciate it. Think we should get started, or should we give it a few more minutes? I guess it's just a minute past the hour. We'll give it one more minute. See if we can get people to do the blue sheet. The um, if 
you click through is also an etherpad. John, if you'll click the etherpad in, love to have notes on the etherpad. Do we have Mahesh here? I was a little bit scared because he said he was um, I suppose I should flash the note well. There we go. We had the pretty butterfly and now we have the note well. I am not seeing Mahesh. We may have to come back. He thought it was Thursday the 8th and I thought no. So we'll give it a We may go on to uh, Donald. What time, what time zone is he in? He, I, is I in get... he is in Pacific, so. Okay, well, yeah. Bit early for him. Bit early, but I was up at his NetConf meeting that started <laughs> uh, an hour, two hours earlier. Uh, the, the app stuff. So come on. You're not getting sympathy from me. Yeah. We've got routing area. Is that you? Um, this is me. <laughs> I figured yeah. it was you. Okay. Yeah, I have the same bug. That I can't log out. So. Hello, Mr. Routing Area. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. A matter of fact, we at first I thought you were blowing us off, and then I heard you speak and realized that, that you were the routing area in the LSR meeting. Yeah, for some reason, um, WebEx doesn't let me out. Yeah, I had to click around a long time to figure out how to stop being IDR working group. Oh, if you could send me a little note on how to stop being IDR working group. I haven't clicked around enough to work on it. All right, I'll have to figure it out again, but. Okay. I, I, I'm on twice, once right now, once as me and once as IDR working group, and it's just, it's from two different machines. Yeah. Okay, well, um, do you want to do the note well today? And then we'll oh, flop over to there. Um, glad to see you. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, let's let's call this meeting to order or disorder or whatever it is that we're doing. Um, and this is an IETF working group meeting. As such, we're meeting under the usual IETF note well. And you get to see the note well slide and um, know that it uh, says important things about your contributions and uh, what implications that has for intellectual property. Um, among other things, and I'm not here to be your lawyer or interpret it for you, but I am here to tell you that uh, if you don't already understand it, you should probably go talk to your legal counsel. And uh, whether you've read it or not, you are deemed by lawyers to have read it. So uh, go read this stuff if you haven't already. Done. Good job. Now let's see if I can not make it. Folks, pretty uh, alternate cat slide. This is butterfly slide. Uh, we're going to start this morning with um, Mahesh, who I'm glad to see joined us with the early hour of 6 a.m. if I'm right, Mahesh, you West Coast. Then we'll go through four presentations with a little bit of discussion time between uh, after well-known communities and weaponizing BGP using communities. We will start with flow spec uh, for L2 and tunnel traffic that follows on last time's discussion. And then after all of that, Christoph is going to be kind enough to give us a presentation on BGP extended community registry update. So with that started, we'll pop into Mahesh's uh, presentation. I'm going to run slides, so I'll go on mute and it's all yours. Just tell me when to move it. Can you hear me, guys? You sound great. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Um, so we, I just have two quick slides to give an update on the BGP Yang model. Next slide, please. So uh, the 08 version of the draft essentially uh, is mostly acting on things we talked about in 106. Uh, we it focused on just trying to clean up the draft, getting it ready for last call. Um, the We have added support for securing the BGP sessions, support for both TCP 
AO and MD5. Next slide, please. So um, coming into this meeting, one of the commitments that we had been working on was trying to see if this model as it is works great for machines, but we also wanted to make sure that if anyone wanted to use the model for the show commands and some of the more uh, basic show commands that the model should be able to support that. And um, what we have found is that we might need to make a few changes, not because we want to support all the commands in this model itself, meaning um, we, we are not going to make augmentations and changes. That's for maybe a separate draft, but we want to at least make sure that the model supports commands like show BGP neighbor, show BGP uh, rib. Um, so to be able to do that, we believe we need to make some changes. And that those are the changes that we will make before we ask for a last call on the draft. Questions? Right. Preemptively covered my one question. So, uh, yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mahesh, for that. I'm going to go on to in the next presentation. Donald, again, I'll run slides. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Coming in loud and clear. Excellent. Okay, so I'm Donald Eastlake with FutureWay, and uh, I'm going to talk about the two drafts for uh, extending flow spec, uh, one to cover L2, including uh, L2 inside of VPN, and the other for tunnel traffic. And there's a substantial number of other, other authors. Uh, I'm sort of being editor and, and pushing this, but most of the, uh, a lot of it originated with other people. So we can go on to the next slide. This kind of shows the document dependency structure. So we got uh, base RFC 5575 this uh, moving along, which covers IPv4, and the separate IPv6 draft, uh, which is sort of dependent on the basic structure set up in 5575 bis. So the uh, L2 VPN draft, which covers L2 as well as L2 VPN, the file name is slightly uh, historic. Uh, it's kind of in the same place as IPv6. It's a separate uh, kind of flow spec based on 5575 this, but there is a some interesting uh, difference there. Um, I'll get to in a second. And then the, the tunnel flow spec kind of uh, needs to do a bunch of things, including possibly headers before and after the tunnel header. So it kind of makes uh, the dependencies or use of all the other drafts. So if we can go on to the next slide, talking about the L2 VPN, it covers both the non-VPN and VPN cases. So there have been some changes between uh, version 12 and the current version 13. Uh, perhaps one of the important ones is to uh, use a, a, a different flow spec registry, it sets up a new flow spec registry for L2 flow spec components, the same way that the uh, IPv6 sets up a, a different flow spec component registry for the V6 uh, components. And that also solves the problem with the uh, non-extensibility with the current uh, flow spec, where it's uh, the problem if you try to define a new additional flow spec components that existing implementations are not aware of. And the only real other change was to add uh, some components that test the bottom four bits of the first octet of the MAC address. Um, that's uh, because uh, people may be aware that the bottom two bits there uh, have long been the uh, multicast bit and the local bit, where if the local bit is a one, it means that that MAC address has been uh, assigned by the local network administrator under the control of the local network administrator. Uh, that's still sort of the, um, the mandatory definition of MAC address, but uh, IEEE 802.1 is set up a thing called the Structured Local Address Plan, or SLAP. So SLAP <laughs> defines uh, two more bits above that. So if the local bit is a one, actually that space is optionally, they say, 
divided into four quadrants. And they, one of them is kind of like the old local, one is um, uh, for uh, uh, the, the different purposes. One in particular is what's interesting is one which is uh, for MAC addresses that have been locally allocated by some protocol. So there are in fact drafts in the IETF DHC working group to allocate uh, local MAC addresses. And there's also an 802.1 CQ effort in uh, IEEE 802.1 to do that. So you might want to just test whether a MAC address was uh, in one of those quadrants or something like that. Um, and uh, also, because it, partly because it's uh, been changed to, to have this separate flow spec for the L2 stuff, you might easily want to test something about the L2 header and also uh, and that with some test on a following L3 header. Uh, make you want, want to test that it's some particular, has some particular IP characteristic uh, and also has a particular VLAN, for example. Uh, so there's a, uh, the, as part of the use of a, a separate components for L2, there's also a, a uh, means to have a different L3 flow spec. Uh, next slide, please. So this is because this is a the, sort of the shows the structure that'd be a um, you know affi safi in front of this and then towards the end of this presentation I have a table sort of talking about all the different affis and safis. Um, you have this overall length and then you'd you'd be using uh, a, uh, a safi for of one thirty four if this was for VPN case in which case it'd be a routing discriminator. Or if it's just an L2 match, you have the SAFI 133. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, AFI will be one indicating that it's L2 in the front. So there's a space for an L2 flow spec. Current draft permits that to be null, which means you're not testing the L2 flow spec at all. Uh, exactly why you're using <laughs> this L flow spec designed for L2 if you're not testing L2, uh, who knows, but maybe it was auto generated or something. At least it's. It, allows that uh, to be legal, which is, uh, seems to be in the spirit of uh, how flow spec is handled. Uh, and there is a space to specify, in addition to the overall uh, L2 AFI, a L3 AFI to test the L3 header, after, it's probably there after the L2 header, and a place for an L2 flow spec. Um, and that's the structure there. Uh, the only change I think is needed in this draft right now is that it needs to clarify that if you specify zero for the L3 AFI, which is a specifically reserved AFI, so it can never be assigned or anything, then that indicates that you're not checking uh, the L3 at all. Otherwise, if you sort of require, an, if you have to have a non-zero L3 AFI, then you have to sort of specify whether you want uh, IPv4 or IPv6. Or possibly something else, I suppose. Really, IPv4, IPv6. You might not want to constrain that. So, uh, allowing a zero L3 AFI there to indicate no L3 testing at all uh, it needs to be tweaked in the draft. It's a pretty small change. Uh, next slide. Yep. So, the tunnel flow spec, which uh, for historic reasons is called NVO3, but actually that uh, covers a wide variety of tunnel types is a, a listing here on the slide. So if people think that, that some of those shouldn't be covered or there's something else that should be covered, that's, you know, um, and the authors are willing to change the draft to make the scope be what uh, the working group would like. There have been some changes from 07 to 08 um, and somewhat similar spirit to the change in the layer two one uh, to avoid problems with the non-extensibility of the existing flow spec uh, and then to line up with the V6 and the L2 flow specs. There's a, a separate registry now for a tunnel header uh, tests that test various fields in the, a tunnel header, in tunnel header flow spec components. And uh, because of that, it's also sort of structured so you can specify whether you want to uh, match on uh, a, a header in front of the tunnel header uh, and or a, a tunnel header after the tunnel header. Of course, some tunnel headers, you, it's really hard to match on stuff afterwards. Like if it's encrypted or something, you really can't at all. But uh, in some cases you can. Some, some, some kinds of quote tunneling and quote like IP and IP are really very, very straightforward. You might want to test on both IPs, for example. Uh, 
uh, but both of these drafts also have some editorial improvements, in, at least as uh, editor, I think they're improvements. Uh, next slide. So this is the structure. This is uh, somewhat more complicated. Uh, there would be a um, a new SAFI to indicate this. So uh, there's a table at the end, by the way, of AFIs and SAFIs. So I can go over that. Uh, then there's the overall length, and there you specify what tunnel type you're you're after, and it only matches things that use that tunnel type. And there's space for some flags there, and there's this optional routing discriminator, and the presence of that would be indicated by one of those flag bits. So this is a little different between uh, for the uh, V4, V6, and uh, L2. There's uh, two different SAFIs, uh, 133 and 134, to indicate whether it's a uh, VPN or not, which is whether there's a Writing discriminator could do that here, but that would just sort of burn another SAFI, and I'm not sure if it's useful. Uh, so it's only specified to be indicated by a flag. Uh, the, I guess the advantage of using a different SAFI is because you can indicate support for AFI SAFI pairs independently. Uh, and whereas there's no facility to indicate support for this flag internally. So that's a question of whether it's worth having another SAFI. So the um, uh, for either a non-VPN or VPN case of tunneling. Um, anyway, the uh, there's a three flow specs in this case, but potentially three rather. There's a, the the tunnel header flow spec, which uh, uh, would uh, always be pre well, it's logically present. It could be null in some case. We'll see. Uh, the uh, uh, there's a, uh, a place for a flow spec for the uh, headers in front of the, the tunnel header. It might be a L2 header in front of the tunnel header, for example. And depending on the flags, you can optionally specify you also want to uh, match on uh, headers after the tunnel header. So it, it's it's more complicated than the other cases, but I don't think accessibly so. And it provides the options that you would want to have available. Uh, next slide. This is an example of a very simple case, IP and IP. In this case, the, the tunnel header is null. <laughs> there isn't any tunnel header as such between the two IPs if you have IP and IP. And uh, you have places where you can put uh, matches on the outer IP header. Uh, and if you specify, if you specify L2, you could also, you could actually match on the, the Mac and possibly the tagging there. Uh, yeah, you could match on VLAN or something, um, and, and as well as the outer IP header, and then uh, you can match on the inner uh, IP. So that's a pretty simple case. Uh, those are the optional uh, matching on on the, the uh, and actually the IP. These IP matches actually can match on things like they're a little beyond the IP, the UDP, and TCP and ICMP. Uh, Header, oh, yeah, header information also. Uh, next slide. So this is the only, this is, I have two examples. This is the second one. So this is VXLAN, popular tunneling, uh, which has uh, a VXLAN header, various fields. You can match those with the tunnel header flow spec. And as before, you have the outer flow spec of VXLAN, the way it's specified, there should be a UDP header in front of the VXLAN header. And um, you can also optionally match the uh, inner uh, material, which uh, would be looks way be a class specified. There should be a, 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 a there's a MAC header there, uh, and you can you can match on that. Um, not not really covered in this presentation. There are of course appropriate uh, you know community thing uh, feel uh, things available to make various actions on matching these various different things. Uh, next slide. So this is this uh, overall to the structure of the AFI SAFI. You know, the first row across there is 55, 75 bits, and uh, we have the, uh, the columns are the I show the flow spec and the VPN uh, SAFIs, and then the uh, new SAFI TBD for tunneled, and then the far right is the registry set up by that draft. Uh, or we used by that and used by it, I guess. Uh, so the first one, of course, is IPv4 in the base spec. Next one, IPv6. 
This is AFI 2, um, not giving six full spec components. The L3, L2 draft, rather, the third row across, uh, has uh, currently as well as AFI equals six uh, or 25, depending on whether it's VPN or not. Six just says it's a, sort of a, you know, a Ethernet MAC header. Um, and uh, this shows that the inner AFI can be uh, one or two. As I say, that graph needs to be tweaked to allow zero to. You don't want to constrain to be IPv4 or IPv6. You want to ignore the inner, header, the inner L3 header completely. So it's up to the L2 flow spec uh, component types. And then the last one is the tunneling draft, which uh, can have various AFIs in front uh, and tests uh, various different types of, of addresses and can have optionally the inner AFI and sets up the tunnel header flow spec component types. So, uh, next slide. So, what should be next steps, in my opinion? Uh, uh, I'd say they're going to do this uh, minor tweak to the L2 to produce a version 14. And oh. I think at that point, uh, not, not all claiming the draft is perfect, but I think it's ready for a working group last call, uh, which might reveal some, something interesting if they're putting what comments there are. But I, I think that's in pretty good shape. The flow spec. Uh, uh, tunneling draft uh, until spec like NVO3. Um, I appreciate people could look at that draft. Uh, it may also get tweaked to a 0 09, but um, uh, it, it's uh, somewhat more complicated. There may be more wonder cases there, so I think that may need uh, another rev or two before it's ready for working group last call, but hopefully uh, soon it would be ready. So those are my uh, comments, and uh, I'd be interested in any. There's questions that people have. Or if they're not, <laughs> I don't. I don't see anybody yeah. in the mic queue. Um, I did okay. see a a comment from Jeff Haas saying that um, as soon as he gets around to it, he uh, plans to review the documents. Okay. I, I, I hope a few other people will, um, you know, please, please take note of the fact that, um, you know, we've got a working group last call and a soon working group last call and it's, it's allowed to provide review before working group last call. It's even encouraged. <laughs> absolutely. It would be great. I, I, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I, <laughs> absolutely. No, it's, uh, I welcome review and comments on it, as do the other authors. Well, if that's it, that's it, I guess. Good morning. Thank you, Donald. We'll go on to Jacob then. Yeah, hello. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, the uh, authors here, uh, we want to uh, propose a well-known large community. Next slide, please. Okay, as a background, um, here is the large community. Uh, a large community is just like a regular community, but it's 12 bytes long. Um, the uh, first uh, four bytes are typically <clears throat> uh, typically in ASN and in these uh, two other uh, words of uh, local data part. Um, this is uh, typically used <clears throat> uh, to uh, tell other ASNs um, how to treat the route or to uh, or to tell others uh, about properties of the route that you are sending them. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, large uh, in regular communities, um, there is uh, well-known communities, and what we want with this one here um, is to have um, a well-known community with some data. Um, <clears throat> uh, we do have some examples. Um, uh, no export to a specific ASN, so you want to specify the ASN, um, as well as the fact that this is a particular action that you want for that ASN. <clears throat> no export from a specific ASN. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and another example is the down only indicator um, from a specific AN. 
for route leak detection is that um, SRIRAM's uh, draft, the um, route leak detection and mitigation draft. <clears throat> um, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay. Um, so here is the encoding. Um, we want to. Uh, so now, one tricky bit here is that um, uh, in order to put something into the first word um, of the large community, um, uh, we need to make sure that this does not um, conflict with any other large communities from or, or, or used by um, certain ASs. Uh, because um, in that uh, first word, you put an AS number typically. Um, so um, in order to make sure we do not conflict with any existing ASs, um, we put <clears throat> um, the first six bits there um, is a bit pattern that causes it to um, look like a certain range of ASNs. So we need to uh, reserve a range of ASNs um, just for the use of this um, so that it doesn't conflict with any of those ASNs. Um, and um, I have here fixed six bits to indicate well-known large community. And this is the range of ASNs that it reserves. Um, that is a small range just below the um, um, private ASNs. <coughs> um, Next, uh, we have two bits of transitivity, <clears throat> uh, which I'll get into on the next slide. Um, that is uh, that. Okay, I'll get into that in the next slide. Then we have um, 10 octets of um, well-known community specific data. Um, that's any data that you want to put in there. Um, now, uh, the <clears throat> um, the ID, the well-known community ID, is um, one byte long, one octet, um, eight bits. Um, I've had some comments that this may be a bit short. Um, now, uh, to make it longer, um, you can have uh, you can use the data one field to split it up into um, more values uh, as a subtype, if you will. <clears throat> um, next slide. Uh, the transitivity. So um, I've seen that uh, um, there are some issues with. Um, okay, I wanted to um, uh, make this uh, a bit of a parallel with extended community transitivity. Um, <clears throat> uh, regular um, uh, BGP attributes um, have a transitivity, and that means um, uh, whether a a receiving router um, will or will not um, uh, transit the community um, to the next one if it doesn't understand the community. In uh, For extended communities and for this one, transitivity has a different meaning. It means whether to uh, transit the community across an AS boundary. <clears throat> um, so we have, uh, we have four different transitivities. Uh, we have transitive, um, regular old transitive, like it goes everywhere, or non-transitive, it does not go across AS boundaries. Now, the new transitivities that I have here is um, transitive across, throughout a single administrative region only, and not across that administrative region. Um, so that's the uh, the picture on the left there. We have ASs one, two, and three, which are uh, part of an administrative region, and AS four, which is not. Um, the way that this would work is that um, <clears throat> the ones that are not so so between AS three and AS four, it's just a regular thing. There's no configuration um, to make it do that. Um, the ones inside the administrative region, like between AS one and two. Um, you need a configuration to tell it um, that those are um, within the administrative region. You do the configuration on both sides. Um, the, uh, the second configure uh, transitivity, the picture on the right, 
<clears throat> um, is one time trains that means <clears throat> that means the community the extended uh, the large community um, can uh, transit from one AS to the next one but not to a subsequent one so it only does it only does one hop and the way that's done <clears throat> is that um, the router software will um, as soon as it transits one AS it will change the transitivity to non-transitive. So that's the way that one would work. Um, and uh, uh, one more comment I wanted to make um, is that um, communities, so this, um, so the community is a transitive path attribute. So as in path attribute transitivity. <clears throat> um, so anyone that doesn't, does not understand um, um, the, uh, this scheme here and these transitivities will transit them anyway. <clears throat> um, so these are, um, so just like um, any communities, um, anyone is free to um, accept them or reject them. Uh, and they typically do that. Um, so this transitivity is, um, what do you say? It's, uh, um, it's, not a, it's not a mandatory thing, it's advisory. Um, and as such, um, uh, those that do understand it um, will uh, use it in this way and, um, and those who do not um, will just reject them as normal. Uh, any questions or um, or Sri Ram or John want to say anything? Yeah, two questions in the queue, uh, Jeff, then Randy. Okay. Unless you guys want to hold until after Sri Ram, it's up to you. Let's go. Oh no! Let's uh, go. Let's go ahead with questions. I was just going to say that I had no comment at this time. And uh, to your point, John, I submitted this to the WebEx specifically because I didn't have to be the one reading this. Um, so when I was reading the draft, uh, this is Jeff Haas, I didn't see any commentary about the AS numbers being requested, being reserved from IANA or their IRs or whoever happens to hold this set of the space right now. That's comment number one. Comment number two, one of the interesting side effects about the way uh, 1997 was put together is it basically used the top uh, AS number uh, that was available at the time and effectively restricted it because the side effect of the community using 1997 as an example of being the all ones is that that AS number is no longer available due to have more generic community see done to it. You can't say AS65535 colon 100 and have that mean something generic to that AS number. So <clears throat> the consequences that AS number fell out of use in pretty much everybody's implementation it's sort of restricted magic number. What you're doing is carving yes. out a section of AS numbers sort of in this middle range uh, that's uh, marked by this big pattern. You've, as a consequence, created a set of AS numbers that now probably should get magic treatment if they are seen routed in the internet. Any commentary on that? Um, yes. And, uh, and uh, in the draft, there is an IANA consideration uh, section of um, requests for that range. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, I may have missed it. I guess I actually see it's the first paragraph. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the second point. Yeah, the IS, yeah, yeah, you're correct. Um, the IANA consideration section, um, I did not update that properly. Wait, 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 wait. No, I'm looking at the wrong graph. It's, the, it's the very first paragraph. I, I just missed it because I was not awake enough. Um, but, uh, uh, no, yeah, 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 it is, it is, yeah. 
in the IMA consideration section. And yes, it is requesting a range of um, um, AS numbers, uh, which then, um, as you perfectly say, um, cannot then be used. Now, um, now as it is, um, you know, I did look um, in the uh, in the IANA to see what um, uh, ranges were available, and uh, and this range is is currently unused. There is an extremely large range that is currently unused and will never be used for any ASNs. This range is so big um, that um, it's perfectly uh, um, <clears throat> reasonable to um, to carve out um, such ranges. Um, so this this carves out a, um, a range of 164th of the available space, which is more than enough for anything. Right. <clears throat> um, so you've answered my question about the reservation. And your your response to my comment about these AS numbers are effectively now magic in global routing. Yes. We'll never need more than six hundred and forty k anyway. Yeah, sixty seven million. It's one sixty fourth of the um, uh, of the space. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying you've not made them special. Yes. Yes. This, this, this people people's Global BGP implementations, should they be dropping announcements with those AS numbers as an example? Oh, they should be reserved for this purpose. So that's why I'm asking Ayana to reserve them. I'm not talking about this number showing up in a community. <clears throat> I'm talking about uh, the AS number that you've curved out showing up in an AS path. Yes. What does the yes mean? Um, it it means um, uh, this is a this becomes a magic number. Anyway, so in, 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 talk in, about it. Yeah, yeah. In the in the um, if you use it in the AS path, um, it will have no effect. So it's, it, it, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't use it in the AS path, but if you want to use it in the AS path, it doesn't actually matter. You just can't use it in this community. somebody else uh john was my point and the intent clear to you yeah yeah i, I get it can I, can I jump in this is straight on relevant to this uh part of the conversation then please go ahead ah uh, yes um so essentially uh, jeff is asking if uh, the numbers and effective as numbers uh, that are part of the well-known large community set, uh, then would you, if AS numbers happen to appear in the AS path, then would you drop the update uh, just like you, you would drop the up if it were a private uh, AS number uh, that appears in EBGP? Uh, I think the answer to that question should be yes. Uh, I, um, I think Jacob was trying to say yes to that. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, is that all that you wanted to ask, uh, Jeff? That whether the answer is yes or no? I think the answer is yes. I, I think it's stronger than private AS numbers. Uh, this is something that BGP implementation sh should do automatically, rather than require special configuration for. <clears throat> okay, then uh, if, if that's what you think, then yeah, we could do that. There should be no problem to do. Uh, it's my question. Okay, anything else? Oh, Randy had an issue. Uh, just two things. One is to the previous point, uh, dropping private AS is under operator control. It's not automatic. Number two is on the slide we're facing. <clears throat> Did I understand you correctly that in the right hand diagram that the propagation from AS2 to AS3 is prevented by the router and not by operator control? Right. 
That's new and different. Is this an attribute or is this a community? It's a community. But um, currently, communities, d decisions about propagation and manipulation are not made by the router. They're under operative. Hey, it's new and different. No further comment. Okay. Uh, do you want to respond to that, or shall we take Rudiger's question now? Um, I still think I did respond to that bit. Um, so. Yeah, the router, the, rea the router changes the transitivity from uh, uh, from this one time when it goes across the nearest boundary for the first time, it changes it so that it won't go across the next one. Well, we're well in conflict. Yeah. We'll deal with it on the uh, list. Okay, read it, please. You are muted, it looks like. I'm, uh... Okay. We hear you. Okay, so, uh, no, I'm not. Can you hear you, Rudy? Yet? You? Yes, we hear you. Okay. We can hear you, but you're very choppy. Uh, ooh, too bad. Uh, uh, yes, the uh, turning a range of AS numbers into metric numbers that actually that actually actually are supposed to have semantics for the redistribution is uh, something that needs a lot of scrutiny. Um, um, uh, I would. Not think that uh, uh, actually something specific is needed for uh, suppressing AS paths with the metric numbers because well uh, everybody could be already filtering AS paths with strange AS numbers and probably should be doing so. Um, uh, uh, the semantics of the metric numbers uh, uh, following on, on Randy's remarks uh, actually are seem to be very tricky because uh, uh, you are talking about uh, not only uh, the single hop um, thing, uh, you are also, and that's, uh, much more uh, fragile, talking about the administrative domain thing, which obviously would require some concept of administrative domain uh, being configured somewhere. Um, uh, and uh, if that configuration is uh, something that has to be done uh, in the policy of each router that's supposed to propagate or not to propagate uh, 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 routes. Um, well, okay, that's, that's going to be uh, uh, a source of leaking uh, unexpected, unexpected communities. Uh, Due to due to uh, failure of consistent of consistent configuration of all the edge routers of an administrative domain. Um, so that needs that needs uh, I think a lot of scrutiny, and uh, probably and probably some explanation of uh, how administrative domains are supposed to be actually administered towards uh, creating the proper 
uh, root root policies. Thanks. Um, okay, Rudiger, um, <clears throat> thanks for that comment. Um, uh, so it is. It appears the administrative transitive um, is a little. I don't know how to explain it any more than I already did. Um, it needs to be configured on both sides of the ASN uh, of the ASs. So the leaking uh, leaking across, say, from AS three to AS four, um, is um, uh, I don't think that's very difficult at all. Um, it because to make the two ASs um, in the same administrative region, it needs to be configured on both of them. Um, so if you don't configure it on both of them, it won't go. Um, it'll, uh, um, and and this um, this would be um, done in the router code. Um, that's that's where I would do it. I would do it in the router code uh, to have the router recognize these things. Um, um, but you could do it in the policy if you wanted to. But it would be easier to do it in a router code. Well, uh, just 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 a note that uh, whatever is being done in root manipulation in the router code, uh, of course, also is a part of a policy. Uh, but well, okay, for for doing for doing stuff in the router code, uh, a, a, kind of uh, some configuration uh, seems to be uh, required somewhere. Yes, 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 the configuration is required. The, the configure it is, you need to configure um, the ASs uh, to be um, in a specific administrative um, region so that the router code knows that they are there. And then you are saying, and then you are saying, uh, for the administrative domain uh, control to work, uh, you need you need coordinated configuration on both uh, the on both sides of uh, uh, of the peering relations um, of the the routers. Yes. Um, so if the if the configuration is not there, how how yeah how 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 realistic how realistic is the assumption that you have a collection of ASs that are uh, that are under a single administrative in a single administrative domain and have well okay or the or the full edge consistently con. Uh, outside edge of uh, of that administrative domain have that consistently uh, configured uh, already uh, is a challenge that uh, uh, there is a challenge of making sure that the configuration is consistent on the full edge uh, but making the assumption that all of the peers of that administrative domain also consistently configure their side, their edge policy, uh, kind of that looks uh, that looks to me completely unrealistic. No, no, I don't see. The, I see it very easy to do, um, uh, Rudiger. Um, uh, th this is not this is not a, this is not a big challenge. Um, <clears throat> uh, the reason is that. It has to be configured in for all the routers inside, not on the edge of the administrative region. It, it, um, it doesn't have to be configured on the edge of the administrative region only for the ones inside of it. So there's no okay. there's no there's no need there's no need to be consistent um, at all um, across the region boundary. Okay, so uh, the other side doesn't have it, then it won't go over. Okay, so uh, kind of a challenge is you only can make use of it after you have all of the uh, routers that are doing eBGP in between the ASs of the domain uh, actually, actually, actually uh, are uh, are applying the specific new policy. Yes. Uh, well, 
Okay, that's that's challenging. And for that to work, I certainly wouldn't wait for having all of my vendors uh, uh, delivering the implementation in router code. If I had any vendors anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. You had, you I'm had done. A first question too, uh, which I forgot what it was. Uh, well, okay. I just, I just commented. I just commented that. Uh, um, the question of whether uh, uh, record. Well, okay, for for implementing the metric semantic of the uh, used range with regards to transitivity, uh, uh, quite obviously, quite obviously, is something that uh, probably that probably uh, uh, could ha uh, could want support uh, from. Uh, specific router functions to identify the metric number range. For the question of how to deal with AS path attributes that include the bad, uh, the, the metric numbers, uh, my comment was, well, okay, we don't, I, I don't think we need to deal with that because it's, it's uh, in the in the long run, in the long run, I would expect that uh, 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 serious networks will actually filter out recognized uh, 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 bad AS numbers showing up in the AS paths. Um, for example, also to avoid uh, potentially, potentially interesting uh, uh, effects of have people using strange ROAS for uh, Martian AS numbers. Uh, so the IANA website uh, does have, a, have the ranges of um, ASs that are um, to be um, all allocated. Uh, that are ready to be used uh, for anybody who wants to uh, get a new ASN. Um, those ranges are there. And then there's the um, unused ranges. And so I've picked an unused range that is not there to be allocated for um, people that want an ASN number. So and, and, and there is and there is the NRO. Delegated extended uh, uh, registry that actually also can be used to identify the AS numbers that have been delegated by IANA to the rears, but are marked as not yet to be or not anymore being used uh, for anything by the RIRs. And actually, actually, I presented a little bit of statistics about that at one of the uh, previous SIDR uh, CIDR ops uh, sessions. Okay, so to summarize that one, um, you said uh, that the range um, is, um, if if any. If any one of these um, magic numbers appears in an AS path, um, that it would not cause a problem. Um, so well, no okay. Uh, range. Well, no. okay. Well, okay. Uh, you define actually a range, of course. Yes. Uh, uh, to be uh, del uh, to be uh, assigned by IANA for this for this uh, use as magic numbers. And uh, well, okay. I I would not see I would not see uh, uh, for AS path filtering a need for specific uh, support in router code to identify this range. But kind of, kind of. I think I 
I, I think that's second order uh, uh, interest. The interesting thing is uh, the loading of magic numbers with semantics. And that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. That's... I think it's useful. I think it's useful uh, to do that. Okay. So... Uh, it kind of, I guess. I guess, I guess, I guess there will be a little bit more extended discussion on that. But okay, I'm I'm done for now. Ah, uh, for now. Thanks, um, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to um, relay a message for Jay Borkenhagen, who's having problems with his mic. He says. Friendly reminder from RFC 8642. Uh, five, note that, or note for those writing RFCs for new community like attributes. When establishing new attributes similar to those in RFC 1997, large communities, wide communities, etc., RFC authors should state explicitly how the new attribute is to be handled. And then in parentheses, handled means manipulated by policy. End of comment. I'm sorry, what was the RFC number? Uh, 8642. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll, I'll take another look at it and um, send on the list. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think next in queue is, wait a minute, uh, Yunan, please go ahead. Um, hi, Jacob. Hi, everyone else. Uh, am I heard? Yes, hi, Yunan. Uh, great. Uh, I, I just have a, a, a small suggestion, um, not specifically a uh, to this draft, but um, to the uh, large community RFC, which is, um, I think, 8092. So uh, should some, uh, I mean, specifications regarding uh, the handling of uh, reserved ASN be, specif uh, be specified, added to the RFC? I mean, not, not only uh, regarding the well-known large community uh, using, you know, a part of the uh, uh, reserved numbers, but possibly some other uh, future usage. And also, uh, it probably should cover the question that uh, Jeff previously raised that um, if we have the uh, reserved ASN carried in the AS pass, should something like that be uh, specified? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you want. I to mean, it's not like a, a a a a a suggestion uh, specifically towards your draft, but I think uh, maybe some updates to RFC uh, 8092 uh, should include some, uh, you know, um, statement regarding the handling of uh, reserved ASNs, right? Uh, the philosophy behind uh, creating and using the large communities actually was to use the 96 bits that we have in the large communities is free of free of uh, uh, semantics uh, for everybody. Um, and uh, uh, Jacob's suggestion of creating number ranges with mag magic number ranges with semantics is kind of a fundamental change of what the large community definition is right now. Yes. I mean, if we're going to like use uh, this uh, this special uh, range of ASN, 
we should at least specify them in the RFC, right? Uh, if we're not, then that's never mind. Um, yes, I have asked for a range um, in the draft to be reserved for this purpose. Asking for a range is something quite different from saying uh, a number space that just has administrative hierarchical structure at the moment. A S numbers first 32 bits uh, to something where A S numbers uh, actually have semantics beyond indicating who is the owner of the code space of the following 64 bits uh, is a fairly fundamental thing and goes far beyond just registering number ranges and that and that and that has that has repercussions uh, or should have re repercussions <clears throat> Um, yeah, uh, for yes, for for yes, the Rudiger, basic for the basic that. large communities. Yeah, yes, Rudiger, you've already said that, um, and yes, that is what I'm asking. So I do agree with you. Um, now, um, actual repercussions, um, uh, in my opinion, um, are pretty much nothing actually, Rudiger, um, because that range is not used uh, uh, currently. So I'm not. Uh, Taking that, and, um, and 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 there's nothing fundamental about it either. Uh, I think I think I think I think the pointer that Jay offered is essentially pointing at this kind of problem, um, and uh, I could I could I could very much. Uh, 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 imagine a system where we do not need to do this kind of uh, introduction of magic for a number range. Uh, but obviously, obviously explaining that is uh, far beyond uh, uh, a voice a voice explanation in this conference call. I think we could uh, we could further this on the list. Um, okay. Um, so I think Randy also had a, a point uh, that related to Jay's point that I relayed. So Randy, if you'd like to jump in. Jay is saying that you need to specify what must be provided to the operator for configuration options. But in general, this proposal needs to that's you have to say what the operator controls what the router does by vendor hard code what the if you have magic numbers and those magic numbers look like as numbers what happens in the as path what happens in allocation so on and so forth and that stuff has to be really clear and really enumerated and has to work together and has to be each together and each individually has to be understood in incremental deployment. And you want to respond to that, Jacob? If not, we have G next. Okay, thanks, John. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will read. Um, I will read that one again uh, and take it to the list. Yeah, answer to this on the list. Okay, thanks. Go ahead, Jake. Okay, okay. My first comment is uh, similar to what uh, raised by Jeff and uh, Randy about whether this ASS when the AS numbers uh, appears in the AS pass or in other situations not in this uh, large community, is that uh, allowed or not? I think this should be clarified in the document. Uh, 
Um, if you, yes, I, I, yeah. I, I did say uh, all this. This was um, this was asked um, uh, previously, also by um, uh, Jeff and Rudiger, and uh, <clears throat> I will uh, I will add that to the draft um, in uh, uh, in the AS path. Um, I don't think it matters whether you use in the AS path, um, uh, but I will um, uh, put that into the draft. Okay. Uh, the second comment is, uh, uh, basically, I agree with what Rudiger mentioned. I think this is uh, uh, maybe some bigger change than just uh, reserving some uh, range of the numbers, uh, because the new encoding looks uh, uh, more similar to the like a structure uh, format, like extended community, rather than existing large community. So maybe. Uh well, I was thinking like about bring, introducing some this kind yeah, of can, tech. Yeah, can you um, uh, can you uh, uh, bring to the list um, the the uh, act the exact problem that this would cause? Because uh, because just saying oh this is a fundamental change um, is not actionable. Um, you need to bring an actual problem that this is going to cause, and then we can fix it. Okay, okay, we can have further discussion on the list. And uh, another one, maybe more uh, generic uh, comment is whether maybe we should revisit the design methodology of the existing communities, like a, a traditional community, extended community, a wider community, and a large community, to compare what what are the pros and cons of each mechanism. So what when we extend the, this one or another one, we can uh make it uh, both uh, extensible and also its behavior clear not only for the lens extension but also the like the transit transitivity transitivity yeah sorry mm -hmm. all yeah. the structure yeah i think this can be considered uh, all together in the design or in the extensions Okay, that's all for my comments. Thanks. Um, Jacob, do you want to say anything more on that one? Um, I, you know, that was okay. I, I really, yeah, yeah, I, I really don't agree with that. You know, um, so, uh, so I've put in the draft um, uh, <clears throat> what I want to do with it. And that the router code will, uh, I, I guess I haven't been clear as what part the router code does and what part the policy does. Um, but I could, um, I could try to clear that up. Um, but I'm not sure that anything else is needed, actually. Okay, uh, Sri Ram, you're next. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, this is Sri Ram. Uh, I have a little higher level question, uh, actually, for the chairs, John and Sue. Uh, in the, there has been like, we've been talking about um, making an IANA request for a registry for large community uh, for some time. And uh, there was discussion that uh, a, a draft would be generated to, to make that request and uh, make that happen uh, because currently there is no large community registry. Uh, so it's like, would that still, I was thinking maybe this draft can be fast tracked, uh, but maybe that's not the case. Uh, perhaps uh, would you say that uh, we still need a separate uh, draft to IANA to make that request for the large community registry? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so so um, I, I was actually planning to speak to that a little later in the in the um, sequence here, but but no, let, let me take it now. Um, so if if I'm I, I don't clearly remember that previous discussion, but I, I assume that part of our problem with creating a registry is that until you have um, a space to register under, um, in other words, the concept of a well-known um, community, there, there's like, there ain't nothing to register. So we need to have this concept of um, well-known communities. Uh, so uh, in in that way, I think that's directly related to this draft. Um, the problem I'm seeing is right now is all of the discussion so far 
has been related to um, sort of the additional bells and whistles uh, with regard to transitivity. So um, my, you know, just, just in listening to the conversation so far, my feeling would be um, unless there's some fundamental reason that the transitivity all has to get, you know, ha has to be in here as a, as, you know, baked in with the concept of a well-known large community, um, take the, the uh, controversial part out um, or, you know, equivalently create another draft that uh, encapsulates the non-controversial stuff, move that forward promptly, and then, um, you know, argue about the controversial stuff for as long as you want. Uh, I agree that it would be valuable to uh, have a um, registry, but I, right now listening to this conversation, I don't see much hope for moving it forward quickly. Um, so uh, I reserve the right to change my mind since I came up with all of that on the fly. Um, so I see a bunch of people wanting to join on this topic. Um, Jeff, you're next. Hey, this is Jeff. <clears throat> um, to Sri Ram's point about uh, his specific application and his concern that he's sort of stuck until this has been answered, one possibility is to consider encodings that uh, use a single uh, registered AS number for the application, as long as things can be done in there. Uh, if that's the case, then all that's really needed for that application, somewhat similar to how the AS4 path stuff ended up working, is to reserve an AS number, a single AS number, you know, from one of the registries to do that. So you don't necessarily need to gate things on some more generalized feature for one specific application. You can simply carve out a specific AS number. Where this runs into a little bit of headache is a same set of headache that uh, the four byte AS number uh, stuff did for the magic number AS1234. You now have routers that need to do something special with the new magic numbers. And that's sort of the general complaint about uh, any proposal that's leveraging these namespaces that are already you know, set up for AS numbers. You're carving out something that's uh, a piece of signaling information. Uh, Jacob's point and others' point about this being a very large namespace means that's not as tragic as it otherwise could be. Um, so it does uh, cause you'd have to worry about uh, you know, things like do you filter these AS numbers, et cetera. But it does mean that you can move forward without necessarily more general solution. John, can I jump in just for a few seconds? Are you responding to Jeff? Go ahead. Can I can I can I get a quick Siri Ram? Uh, our original original discussions had been to select uh, uh, one or if you needed one or two numbers uh, for the registry for communities that would be allocated to you. Uh, I don't think we went into a discussion, which is the simple solution Jeff just mentioned. Rather than to have a registry so that you could at least register that, I did not think we went to the second step of having structure. So I think we have uh, maybe uh, to make help your stuff go forward, I will uh, echo Jeff's and echo that was the original intent for the registry draft was to get a couple numbers and the suggestion was Either your draft can allocate one or more and we'd work with IANA to try to move that forward and leave the bigger question to longer discussions because as Rudiger said, there's a lot of um, operator input you need on anything further than just allocating specific numbers. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. So I uh, fully agree with that. So thanks to Jeff and you for those suggestions. Uh, one quick question I have is, uh, is large community considered to be um, transitive uh, by the current definition? Because we need, in route leaks, we need it to be transitive. It's a transitive path attribute. Okay. So then it will work. We can go with uh, Jeff and Sue's suggestion. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, Rudiger is next.
Rudiger, are you there? Rudiger is muted. Huh? No. Okay, here. We, I guess now I'm heard. Uh, yes, I, I I very much agree with Sue's point. Um, and I would like to also make the remark that, well, uh, say the uh, Sri Ram use case is something well defined and very specific, um, while uh, Jacob's draft seems not to explain what kind of well use the well-known communities will actually have and what implications of defining such well-known communities will have with regard to uh, getting support in the router implementations or in the policy definitions done by the operators. Um, going for one or a few AS numbers uh, for specific use uh, does not really have that problem because each specific use uh, will be considered on its own merit. And um, uh, well, okay. Uh, I think we have one or two cases where, where such use is merited. So, thanks. Okay, this is a framework um, here. What I'm proposing is a framework um, in which to uh, put these specific uses. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, you, would need, so you, would need, you would need to add to the framework for being useful also the semantic boundaries of the use cases. What does that mean? Uh, that would mean, like the original well-known communities said, every router who sees a well-known community has to act in a certain way. At the Dublin, or rather Irish, uh, countryside IETF, uh, IDR figured out that, well, okay, adding well-known communities this way is something that was impossible at that point in time, and certainly that, st that status hasn't changed. Uh, over the past decade, a couple of uh, additional uh, well-known communities have been uh, defined, uh, but obviously not with the semantics of every router who sees these uh, communities has to actually act on them. Uh, at least, at least the uh, definition whether uh, the allowed semantics of uh, use of uh, uh, Jacob's uh, large communities, um, whether it is supposed to be the old time well-known community or the uh, more recently used one or something else uh, quite certainly would need to be explained. Uh, so I'm doing uh, something equivalent to, uh, uh, you know, if you want to make a parallel to the regular communities, um, I am reserving like the 65535 five number, but this actually being a range to carve out the 65535, five, the equivalent of the 65535, five, in which you can then specify um, yeah. new, new um, uh, well known communities that have a specific behavior. But this one is not, but not is not proposing any any specific well-known large communities. It is a framework yeah. within which you can then specify. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Do following your proposal, you would actually need to make that explicit, and probably work out 
the consequences of the point that Jay was bringing in. Uh, but uh, I, I think I am done for now again. For each, for each new one. So, uh, so an example would be uh, the black hole community that was uh, recently added as a, as a well-known community. What to do with that? So what do we do with the black hole community that still has to be uh, um, treated in the in the policy? The RADA doesn't actually do anything with the black hole community. Um, it has to be it has to be recognised. It has to be programmed um, in the policy, not in the RADA code in that particular case. Um, so I'm not asking. So in my draft, I'm not asking for any specific well-known large communities. I'm asking for um, uh, to um, reserve a set of uh, um, AS numbers inside of which we can then um, specify specific well-known large communities and their semantics. This is Heasley. May I add something to that? Um, I think uh, an important point to observe about Jacob's about the draft, uh, the the proposal in the draft is that it allows for two um, four byte ASNs or four octet ASNs. Plus, you have uh, I think it's ten bits of additional space that you can um, that can be specified as as part of the of the community. So given one community value or in the range, you don't have to, um, uh, you, you have the ability to, to, to uh, have the two ASNs plus a value that specifies some function of it, which is if you're allocating um, uh, ASNs specifically as Rudiger suggested, then uh, I guess somebody else has suggested that as well. That reduces that utility because of that, that uh, extra 10 bits that you could otherwise specify. And I don't think I expressed that all that well, but um, I, I guess I'm, um, to, to sum that up, it's you're reducing the, um, the, the namespace that you have by, by I think, adopting that other um, Rudiger's suggestion. Okay, uh, so I'm going to cut the line now uh, after me because I've been standing up for a long time in the line. Um, uh, so now putting on my individual contributor hat. Um, uh, I guess if a, a few of my questions were sort of nitpicky encoding things, and I'm just going to skip over that in the interest of time. Um, I, I have sort of two higher level things. One is um, so, as I remember uh, in the original discussion that led us to large communities to begin with, there was a, a really strong feeling on the part of the authors uh, that large communities um, should not have any kind of fancy embedded semantics. And um, I was sort of expecting to see the, you know, a, a, a slide, you know, on, you know, why we felt that and what changed. And um, I didn't. So as one of the advocates for keep it simple, um, Jacob, um, I wonder if you would be willing to tell us what changed. Um, it's it's it's, what, it's not yeah, intended yeah, as like a, a gotcha yeah. question. I just yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. What? No. Uh, uh, why do we want it now? I didn't want it before. Um, uh, well, uh, John and Sriram uh, came up with uses um, where they wanted to add an ASN to um, a community. Well, it could have been done with an attribute, but if we have communities um, for this, seems like um, an easy way to get it done. 
Okay. Uh, and perhaps my. We should have, perhaps we should have um, uh, uh, foreseen um, the need for uh, for such uh, structure in the um, large community um, back then, but we didn't. So now we do. Okay. Water under the bridge. Um, is, and, and then the second point um, is, uh, I guess to kind of repeat what some other people have said um, is, is the, um, this transitivity stuff seems like it is not trivial and it seem, feels a little weird and maybe wrong to apply it to just one path attribute and in fact just one flavor of one path attribute um i i, I know we've you know there, there's always this risk in idr of of uh saying hey let's take this thing and generalize it and then you never get to get it done but gosh this really feels to me like something that ought to be taken and generalized um, before we just put a special case of um transitivity control into one flavor of one path attribute. Um, okay, okay, if I could, we could say a few words on that. Um, um, I know that there was a draft um, uh, some time back, I think Kia was on it, um, to uh, uh, have all subsequent um, BGP path attributes um, have um, uh, extra transitivity in it. Um, and that uh, didn't seem to succeed uh, so I thought I would try it in a more uh, restricted uh, um, in, in, in a restricted part so that it doesn't have to affect every path attribute. So I was taking it the other way here. Um, and uh, to selecting these particular transitivities, um, uh, I do remember that uh, the DMZ link bandwidth um, one was um, non-transitive, whereas that didn't make sense. Um, it really had to be transitive from in between the two ASs um, that were using it, and we had to make a code change to make that actually work. So that's an exception uh, um, to the um, extended community transitivity. Um, and uh, that seemed to be quite a useful transitivity. Um, so that's why I included it here um, on the, uh, the, the one-time transitive. And the, um, the administration uh, uh, transitive, uh, the reason I put that one in um, <clears throat> was because there are some uh, there's quite a few um, um, operators that have multiple ASs, and um, uh, yeah, I remember there was uh, there was one um, that wanted to put the uh, local preference across between um, ASs and several other attributes they wanted to put across um, ASs because they all had different ASs, but you know, one one um, operator had multiple ASs and they wanted to put lots of things over them. And so, um, so that's why I thought that one was a particularly useful uh, transitivity to have. So, yeah, Kiev draft uh, uh, back then had, uh, had, no, I don't quite remember all of it, but it had something to do with um, um, confederations as well. Right. Okay. I, um... So, so sticking my chair hat back on, co-chair hat back on, I, I think that we're, we're out of time here. So um, I, the, the thing I can predict is a uh, active discussion on the list. Um, there, there was a bunch of stuff in the Jabber room too that I thought I was gonna relay to the mic and we're just out of time. So I would suggest going back and reviewing that too later. Okay, thank you. And let's have our, our next person. Hi, Randy here. Um, this was a conference paper uh, about 18 months ago in uh, the ACM Internet Measurement Conference. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, grad students uh, did all the heavy lifting next. Uh, 
as we've demonstrated in this one little corner of BGP just a few minutes ago, BGP is a little complex and we're good at making it more complex. And we went down this path where operators wanted signaling on top of BGP signaling next. And we added BGP communities and we know what they are. So we'll skip this slide next. And the syntax is theoretically an AS number followed by some arbitrary number next. But AS number might really be anything next. And the following number right may, may really mean anything next. So what we have is completely undefined semantics. We have a syntax, but there are no formal semantics, just convention and common practice, plus a lot of uncommon practice. You'll excuse, I came into this internet as a compiler writer. And so to me, it's like we're putting semantics in the common statements, right? Um, that just doesn't cut it. So what flavors of communities do we find? There are three basic flavors, active ones, requesting path prepending, modifying local preferences, remote triggered black holding, selective announcing. They're passive ones like location tagging, RTT tagging, et cetera, et cetera, putting information on a prefix. And then anything a thousand kitties have invented. Next. <clears throat> it's just some figures to give you some idea of the growth of communities over the last oh, eight, nine years. Next. So. Then there's the question of propagation. Are communities transitive? By the very nature they are. This is a silly example. Next. 97 says they're transitive optional. 7454 says advises that you insert policy to scrub your own and form forward foreign communities received from input to output. So many people do not expect them to propagate that widely. I didn't expect them to propagate that widely. Next. Only 14% of transit ASs propagate community. This is measured, by the way. 2.2 thousand of about 15 and a half thousand. Next. Surprise. Although 14% seems small, the AS graph is highly connected, so that more than 50% of communities transit over at least four ASs. 10% have a hop count of more than six, and the longest community propagation observed is through 11 ASs. By the way, if somebody's watching the Jabber and I should take an interruption, I'll gladly take an interruption. Um, this is the ECDF of the hop count. You can see the distribution on up to 11. So half of the communities are four hop counts. That is the average diameter of the internet is four hop counts. Next. So what do we mean by on path and off path communities? Next. There's a prefix being announced by one. Next, it propagates to three, and it propag next propagates to four. Next. Okay, we tag it with a community. Next. That community said AS, it targeted to AS3, if we believe the AS number. So it's propagated to three. That is AS2 and AS3 are on the path that the community appears to be designed for. And again, the word appears because who knows what the semantics of AS are. Next, it is also propagated to four. Next, four is off path, okay? The community, if you believe the AS number, didn't say go to four. Next. It's okay, Sue. 
here's the distribution of on path and off path communities measured live. And those are community numbers in each bar. And just remember the community 666 and that there's a lot of it off path. Next. And we, and we have no idea what all these communities mean. Next. So the internet is an experimental hack that kind of got out of the cage. Next. So let's break things. Next. So there's a method to our madness and we're not trying to do real damage. So all the active experiments that I'm gonna now go into were actually first tested in the lab. The impacts were estimated. They were validated on the real live internet with operators' consent, i.e. we did real hijacks and stuff like that with the operators' consent, and thank you, a number of operators. Um, next, real-time black holing, one of the very few well-known defined communities which people just in the last presentation were advocating. Next, what a real-time black hole community is, is the target AS plus the number 666 attached to a prefix. Next. And what this was meant for is DDoS defense. Signaling the traffic to a prefix should be dropped. Next. So there's a DDoS attack on poor AS1's server 1.2.3.4. So maybe that's fine, Sue, go for it. So AS1 sends to AS2, hey, that 1.2.3.4, please drop traffic to it. So if AS1 tags it with, hey, I'm talking to AS2, please, and 666, this prefix, next. And AS2 drops the bad traffic for that prefix in the bucket, next. So in theory, there are some safeguards. The provider should check that the customer prefix, they own the prefix before accepting it. They should only black hole their own prefixes. The receiver should have different policies for customers and peers. Should a peer be able to tell me to drop something? On receiving it, do not propagate it is the advice. Next. All of which looks cool, except it's a major attack vector. Next. The attack's pretty obvious. The attacker is ASZ, which you know we see everybody sending nice traffic towards the victim in AS1. Good traffic. There's no DOS attack. Z announces 1.2.3.4 to AS2 with a community black hole for one, two, three, four. Good traffic to AS1 is dropped. Next, and next again. He's very happy. The attack works well. It works from a distance and it's hard to spot. Triggering is possible because black hole prefix is more specific. You notice it was a slash 32. So it's accepted by exception. Providers check the black hole community before prefix of filters because there was a bug in an ad hoc recipe. And that is propagated through configurations all over the internet. But basically, there is no validation for the origin of the community tag, right? There is no authentication. It is a active signal with no authentication. Next. So remember that little one? It's happening off path all over the place. Next. Another attack, traffic steering. AS1 originates a prefix towards two with the path one, two passes into three with the path two one, et cetera, et cetera. We see all the paths. Next, seven is going to choose the bottom because that's the shorter AS path. 
we're going to assume just path length and not go into the 93 other tie-breaking options. Next, we see the uh, data trundling along next and heads towards one, and we're happy. Next, we have an attacker. He wants that traffic. So he colludes with AS2 to tag the prefix with a signal to six to prepend. Six prepends towards seven. Now what, what does seven decide? Next, the shorter path is by five. And the traffic goes that way and our evil friend gets the traffic. Now the evil friend just siphons off the money, he doesn't take everything, and the traffic next goes merrily on its way. Next, yeah, yeah. Is that realistic? I mean, can that really happen? Unfortunately, yes. Next, it was seen in the wild. Dime captured multiple instances making use of communities to shape route propagation. Although the most prominent ones also changed the origin, which gave it away. So this isn't theory. This is happening in the wild. Next. So ASN values are ambiguous. Who's the sender? Who's the recipient? They're notifying semantics. It's used for signaling and triggering. There's no cryptographic protection. There's no attribution. In other words, we don't know who I receive this community. There's a six path long, six hop long AS path in front of it. Who added that community? Who changed it on the way? I have no idea. And it's hard to apply filters when you don't understand what the heck is going on. And filters are all manual. Right? This is just, it's a free-for-all, it's the Wild West. Next. So communities can be modified, added and removed, no attribution, no cryptographic protections. You're betting on the corrections. There's a little improvement with large communities, except we're about to fix that. See the previous presentation. Next. Don't propagate. So, so what we should do for the moment, given the mess we're in, don't propagate without thinking very deeply. Drop anything that's not addressed to you unless there's special agreement, unless you know that's coming. Drop everything on output except signals from you to the direct peer by agreement. Cisco has a ugly problem with well-known communities that um, they treat them differently among them. Some they propagate, some they don't. Next. This was designed on a napkin, and we're going to die by a napkin. And that's about it, I think. Nope, there's one more slide. Yes. And now, vegetables, questions? Answers. Meantime, I'll go check the See Warren in the queue. Warren, please go ahead. Warren Kamari Google. Uh, could we go back to slide 29? Watch, watch out due to um, um, expansion of animations, the slide numbers don't match in the lower right corner. Okay. Uh, th this one will do. So, I mean, I agree that this is a bad. I just want to make sure I understand in this particular thing, um, if the attacker had not tagged or had not added the community, they would still manage to have an attack, right? They would be announcing one, sure two, three, four, traffic for one, two, three, four would float them. Okay, cool. Just, right. just making sure I got it. Yep. Any other questions, comments? I'll, I'll relay uh, one from the peanut gallery, which um, from Tony P. 
where he said, well, you give folks an unlimited crayon box, what do you expect? Interesting presentation, which I agree with. Interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, uh, so let me chime with something more productive, maybe that my, that my you know, peanut gallery. Um, uh, it's a super presentation, and uh, if people do what Randy suggests, which is basically killing unlimited transitivity of the whole thing, that maybe f it will become cheaper for folks to go, um, you know, uh, AS to AS and pass those things or negotiate those things rather than basically abuse things in between to pass stuff through that is intended at signaling point to point. Yes, shutting down a lot of the transitivity will help, but basically I don't think it can be fixed because there's no authentication, there's no attribution, there's, yeah, it's just garbage thrown in the air. Just so so cutting, cutting down the airflow will help, but it doesn't change that it's garbage. Uh, we have two other people in the queue. We have uh, Rudiger and then we have Jeff. Uh, Rudiger, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, and then we have Warren. Okay. Uh, 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 one thing uh, in the, uh, in some part, uh, Randy, you were saying, well, we have all these communities and we do not know the semantics. Um, my guess is uh, actually actually uh, getting to a situation where we can have formal semantics documentation for everything that's floating around uh, seems to be unrealistic at least for a couple of years. Uh, the question of uh, getting to uh, a point where documentation uh, becomes available, I think is something that is uh, somewhat more realistic. Uh, and, uh, well, okay, um, going into details how that can be done and how uh, that might be even uh, uh, done in a way so that uh, the uh, metric bit strings are a little bit uh, transformed into something that is uh, something some somewhat more readable, uh, like we did with machine language in the 50s uh, by int introducing the concept of the assembler languages. I use um, those, Rudiger, don't remind me. Yes, you're right. Document good documentation and um, and as you're documenting structuring things a little more without breaking current deployment, those will help. The question is in my mind is given that the world is getting to be an uglier and uglier place, and I'm not referring to um, the, the, the COVID-19, I'm referring to attacks and, and so on on the internet, and especially as the internet's gain, gaining prominence in the current scene. Um, so the, 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 the heat is going to get greater, and throwing documentation at it improves things. I don't think it improves it enough. Yeah. Uh, at some uh, IETF discussions, I uh, started to make remarks about the need for hygiene, which in the current uh, sit situation uh, kind of uh, comes, comes also to mind. Uh, uh, for the BGPs, for the BG, uh, interdomain BGP sessions, uh, kind of one needs the face mask uh, in both directions. One has yep. to, one has to, one has to filter, one has to filter what the air that we, uh, that we uh, inhale uh, and make sure that nothing dangerous is there, which in BGP terms means uh, we minimize the stuff 
uh, that is actually not authentic. And about the only thing, about the only thing that we can really trust uh, is what the neighbor has under control, uh, if he actually exercises control for the other direction of the use of the masks, where, yes, uh, you also want to use the mask, so you do not spread, uh, you do not spread the bad stuff. Um, and uh, the cider, cider uh, OV egress is an example of that, but uh, say uh, uh, propagating, propagating uh, stuff uh, uh, with uh, strange uh, communities uh, or other path attributes potentially uh, also comes to mind, uh, kind of as you, as, as you, as you uh, propagate any roots in EBGP, uh, you, should, you should consider yourself responsible for all the nasty bits that you are sending. And yes, doing that is something that has not been done 20 years ago, and in most cases is not done completely uh, at the moment. But uh, uh, yes, we have we have we have to actually we have, have to actually uh, get a little bit closer to that. So I, that's, I would be surprised if anyone disagreed with you. Okay, I'm let's. Done. Okay, uh, next person in the queue was Jeff. Jeff, please go ahead. Hey, this is Jeff. So I'm going to change what I was going to say and just simply build on what Rudiger is expressing. I, I think there's several other larger arguments here, uh, but sticking to your presentation, what I think is needed in terms of hygiene, so I think that's the biggest actionable thing here is a little discussion about how do we actually put together lists of stuff that are expected to be propagated versus not. This is partially relevant because several service providers are extremely strong about their scrubbing of communities and don't necessarily let things through that aren't theirs. They're effectively non-transitive by their uh, policy design. Whereas uh, your observations are a lot of people are very lazy about their policy design for various reasons my belief as a vendor that's been working on a few implementations over the years that part of the problem is that our policy languages for communities are simply clunky enough that actually building good hygiene is difficult i think it would be a useful exercise to define what good hygiene looks like uh, somewhat stronger than the current rfcs that are out there and how this would manifest in a, a general policy mechanism um, A, agree, um, but I think just a little wider, um, there's good syntax and semantics for the operator to be able to exercise better hygiene. There is, don't put active semantics in communities. If it's going to be active, put it in a real attribute with a formal definition of how it, how it propagates, how it's transitive, and how it's acted on, because eventually, someday, we're going to secure BGP even better than the current popularity of routing origin validation, in which case, those a real attribute will be signed and you will know who originated and you'll have attribution and authentication don't put active policy in communities don't create new vulnerabilities sorry to rant uh, i will give my terse follow-up to that uh, well understood that's your opinion. It's 
also well understood that the reason we keep having these things happen is because it's a useful mechanism that people like. And PGP is used for things other than internet service, which I know you also have strong opinions on. And that a lot of the times that this stuff manifests is usually in non-internet context. So please remember to include the different contexts when you decide to work on the signing discussions you know, for what your next system is. I think you overstate my opinions. Well, it's the IETF, everybody overstates everybody else's opinions. <laughs> um, I think the queue is empty. Oh, wait, go ahead. Uh, uh, comments uh, to Jeff's question. Uh, I would think that uh, actually attacking the documentation things uh, the, the documentation aspect uh, would provide would provide a base for generating for generating better filters uh, uh, and yeah I'm not completely sure and convinced that uh, 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 the traditional vendors uh, policy languages uh, will offer easy ways to uh, to uh, draw in um, uh, information from uh, a documentation base. Uh, I would expect that it is far more realistic to uh, assume that uh, based on uh, documentation that you We're losing you here. Uh, uh, would uh, well, okay, could be could be done uh, fairly easily uh, by generating traditional language. Um, the documentation, the documentations, the documentation part, uh, I think, is uh, uh, indeed uh, one. One really interesting point that we could be working on uh, to improve to improve, uh, improve uh, the possibility for getting actually hygiene uh, improved. That's it. Side note to Tony: Yes, FlowSpec has a number of these features. Um, I'm involved in a side discussion if there's anything we can do about it, but that's not going very far. Uh, Randy, if you were uh, answering me, I did not understand. Well, no, I said, no, no, no. I said, yes, you're correct. Documentation. My only objection is I'm the one who ends up having to write too much of it. Warren, you're up. I think Warren sat back down, but go ahead, Warren. Warren stood up again. Yeah, Warren stood up again. So, I, I... John, yes. um, this meeting was initially intended to be till just 11 o'clock. We can go on. We so here's I, 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 stops. I, yes, I pasted into the chat um, that anybody who objected to a short extension should email or it should, you know, message me. Um, I have heard nothing from anyone. I'm taking that as silence gives consent. So, um, yeah, if anybody has uh, a problem with us extending for, let's say, 20 minutes, um, please speak up and we will end as scheduled and, and schedule a, uh, another meeting. But otherwise, I'd like to ask for a little forbearance to go over. Continue. So, sorry, Warren, Kamari, Google. Um, so, first off, thank you. I think this is really important. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is why Randy is telling IDR, like what exactly IDR is supposed to do with this, other than maybe, you know, don't design complex active stuff in, um, in communities. I think that it would be really oh, useful to have this documented, like maybe OpsAWG or OpSec. Uh, I can answer your question, which is somebody 
out of the blue yesterday asked me to. And let me take that since it was this chair. Oh, you're going to keep that. So I was trying to cover for you soon. No, no, don't need to cover. I'm glad to be really blunt. Warren, we're getting proposals. If we've got a proposal in front of the working group for uh, structuring communities and going forward, we need to again hear pros and cons. This is a pros and cons discussion about a proposal coming in. We'll continue. You know, it's like wise design. Let's hear the things that could be good, which Jacob has given us, and actually, which Jacob has given us. I gave the wrong pronunciation. And um, Randy is giving us some challenges. Rudiger's getting the challenge. The purpose was to have the very discussion we're having now as an informed community. Did I answer the reason why it's an IDR? I wasn't objecting. I was just trying to figure out what the next step is so that this some progress and moves along. This was not like, oh my God, stop wasting our time. It was a yay, let's move this forward. So apologies if that came up. There. I, I just think we have proposals that need to be considered with a tax in mind. I was very unsuccessful in the well-known community for um, remote triggered black holes in communicating that this had an attack vector and a serious problem. And so I'm just trying to start early now, plus showing the result of my failure is that remote triggered black holes are actually used in attacks today in the wild. Warren, I'll put myself at the top of the line to respond to you. And so IDR being the community that tries to res resolve to that in the protocol, is there something we can do in the protocol or do we need to look to what Rudiger is suggesting, maybe uh, something that automatically generates what's actually happening? What can we do to fix a real live problem? Um, so the chairs are picking the thing. You know, there is a range of uh, potential solutions. We could say, and I'm just talking like John uh, out of 10 seconds thought, we could say, okay, communities is a true loss. And maybe what we really ought to do is have a path attribute. If we've got all these problems that looks like large communities, smells like large communities, but has some sort of origin in it. Okay large community form um, uh, identifier, or an origin or something that can be tracked. This, that's that's one end of the solutions for IDR. Maybe someone's got another one. We got a problem, got to think about it. Jacob's raised problems, so we need help folks. So think please. Okay, and on that very fine soapbox, I'm going to suggest we end this conversation so we can get on to the last one. Uh, or it sounds like Rüdiger maybe wanted the last word. Go ahead. Yeah, just, just, just uh, uh, looking at it. Uh, I was, I was hearing Randy asking for cryptographically armed uh, attributes. Um, Kind of for getting really reliable data, that is obviously uh, something that has to be considered, but we know it takes decades to actually define and deploy uh, if the deployment uh, doesn't fail in the end. Uh, looking into uh, stuff that actually, that, that actually goes into that kind of direction probably is uh, something we actually should be doing. On the other hand, doing things that, w that have a chance for being deployed uh, on a much shorter time timeline uh, uh, probably, probably goes into completely diff different topics like uh, documentation and uh, well, okay, uh, uh, what kind of filter specifications can be used? 
Um, and I think I think we need to do uh, uh, actually both. Nobody's disagreeing with you, Ruger. <laughs> On that fine soapbox, then, I think we will end this talk. Thank, thank you very much. That was obviously super useful. Um, and thanks, everybody, for giving us a few extra minutes so that Christoph doesn't have to talk super fast. Um, thank you, Christoph, for waiting till the end. Please go ahead. Yeah, great. Um, very, very brief because it's very short anyway. Um, presenting a draft which is uh, more or less like a housekeeping draft only. It has its origin in Alvaro's review of the RFC 5575 bis, the flow spec draft. And Alvaro pointed, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, Alvaro uh, pointed out that the BGP extended community types that are used by BGP flow spec, but also by other technology are documented as um, experimental use in the IANA registries. And this draft is basically going to fix it. It's actually asking uh, IANA to, to remove this experimental use um, statements from, from the BGP registries. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, basically, it's, it's asking to update the BGP transitive extended community types, uh, remove the extended com uh, experimental from um, from those names. Um, second, you can uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, second, it's renaming those uh, three registries by removing experimental use from the titles. Those, these are the subtype, subtype registries of the uh, transitive extended community types, subtypes. And third, next slide, please. It's changing the registration procedure of the um, uh, extended community types, uh, hex 80 to hex 82. Um, to remove them from the reserve for experimental use pool and put them into first come first serve pool. Well, basically that's it. So it was less than two minutes, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> this is my draft. It's just five pages. It's a little bit boring. Um, and I request working group adoption. So folks, this is a, thank you, Christoph. This is a cleanup draft. Um, uh, I sort of, you know, Alvaro's uh, work pointed us in this way. Uh, you will see adoption starting uh, as soon as I get an IPR call done. Any questions on it? Concerns? Well, John, then we'll hand it back to you. Great. Well, I think all I have to do is uh, say thanks, everybody. Um, and thanks for hanging in here. Thanks for the useful conversation. And I really hope to see uh, action on the list on some of these things that were so actively discussed in the meeting. Um, as before, any feedback to the chairs about um, using a virtual meeting for this purpose would be helpful. Um, we're still, still learning, uh, but I suspect we'll be doing more of these. So. Thanks very much, everyone. So um, stay safe, and we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for hosting. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.